What's up kids, Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind. Uh, looks like a bunch of cool announcements product-wise are coming out. Uh, I know about the Sony thing. I recorded last week's as the Sony announcement was being made, so I didn't get a chance to throw that out there for you guys. But uh, let's get serious for a second, because Google, it could ditch all the photo thumbnails under EU copyright law. So this is what Google could prepare itself to look like soon with no imaging on their thumbnails. Basically what's happening is, is that there's a copyright law called the EU Copyright Directive, which is basically saying that even if there's something considered fair use by US copyright, Article 13 would require platforms like Google to actively screen all uploads of potential copyright infringement or they could be held liable. Meaning if someone put up a news article, instead of taking uh, a grab from it and putting it up as a thumbnail, it could be copyright infringement under EU law. So they might just have only hyperlinks and no images to go with that. Some people say that this kind of helps protect photographers. Some people say this is just gonna hurt uh, people actually clicking on things and, and going to find the content or and their numbers in general. So we have to keep watch on this one. I don't know uh, how much of an impact this is going to have. It is definitely gonna be shocking when you go into Google and there's nothing but words and blue text to click on. But we'll see about that. Uh, but let's talk about that A6400 that got revealed. So it's an APS-C camera. We all thought that it was gonna be A7000, uh, but it turns out it is a 24.2 APS-C sensor with a Bions X image processor, which allows for some crazy uh, file output because the small sensor, it's less information for it to process. 84% coverage on that autofocus. Um, and, but the real thing is this, the real-time eye autofocus is uh, more accurate, it's faster, it's stickier, things like that. Um, also, real-time tracking. So while something is moving, you, it will actually track the subject uh, pretty well, and we saw some demos of it. Uh, the back screen is still 921,000 dot as opposed to like over a mil or two million as some other screens, and it does flip forward now, but we are seeing some issues with people trying to put a mic on top of the shoe and that screen not doing anything when it flipped forward. So I think the vlogging aspect, um, a lot of camera manufacturers are forgetting the fact that a lot of vloggers want to use a mic with their camera. So I don't know, there's some really cool stuff in this, but they're taking that technology that's inside this A6400. They're gonna spread amongst their firmware and their alpha line with the A9, the A7R3 and things like that, uh, the higher end lines. Uh, some pretty cool stuff's being put in there. They held a press conference to basically talk about how awesome they are, and then they talked about the uh, firmware updates that are coming, but they didn't say uh, they're released yet. So we're looking at the summer of 2019 for things like this, with the firmware update for the A9 being all mapped out for you. So you can see real-time tracking, the real-time IAF, where you uh, half press the shutter release button to activate it, um, real-time AF for animals, so if you're a wildlife photographer tracking those birds, touch tracking touchpad, enhanced stability for the white balance, tonal grade so enhanced overall look and uh, just overall it seems like just updating in general but it, there is a lot of tech going into all their firmware updates which is great um, like I said I, I love that we're in the age of firmware where whatever we have we're looking at the hardware and then they can just expand it and keep expanding it with the firmware and it's going forward like that uh, speaking of new stuff Olympus is teasing their OMD E M1X so there's three videos here. They're each like 19 seconds each. You can see she's like, oh, splashing and I'm shooting and stuff like that. And then there's this one where it's, uh, you know, walking along and we're shooting cars and things like that. So they're just kind of teasing what they think the market base for who would want this new camera coming out. And it seems like it's gonna be cool. We don't, we don't get to say much about Olympus too much uh, these days, but it is their 100th anniversary. Sorry, I'm trying to freeze all these videos. This is their 100th anniversary and they're claiming that every month they're gonna release something crazy for uh, their line. So this is the first throw, it's January. We're gonna see that on the 24th. Um, I will say I got to hold this thing and that's about it. Uh, but keep watching our channel. We'll be dropping at the release uh, some content for you about this camera if you're an Olympus fiend. Uh, speaking of some cool releases, Wacom announced the most affordable Cintiq pen display. So if you're a Wacom tablet type person or you're thinking about getting into Wacom, the Cintiq is the one that actually has the display screen inside the board. So you're actually looking at what you're trying to add as opposed to looking at a screen. Uh, as you can see, it's priced at $650, which is way lower than the Cintiqs uh, before. Um, 
I'm not uh, too experienced with Wacom, but the people that do use Wacom tell me that there's no going back once you hit that learning curve. Let me know if you're a Wacom tablet user. Uh, how long did it take you to get used to using a Wacom or any tablet in general? Do you think the Cintiq is worth it to have the screen right there, or are you fine with using the tablet and looking at your screen and just dictating like it's a mouse? Let me know. I'm kind of curious about that. I'm curious if there's like a little community or, or a, a subculture for tablets out there. Uh, another cool release, let me just start this up over here. So Fuji released the GF100 to 200 millimeter F5.6 RLM OIS WR Elemental P QRX to UV lens. You can see it right here, it's for the GFX medium format body. So this thing is pretty rad. It's about a $2,000 price tag. We're looking at five stop image stabilization. It is a monster, monster lens. Nine blades in the aperture, give you that smooth bokeh, but it's also crazy weather sealed apparently. Um, nine blades is, uh, is a pretty smooth bokeh. When am I gonna get my 17,000 blade uh, aperture control? I, I wanna know when I'm gonna get more blades for my, I'm just kidding. Uh, it looks like a pretty good lens for what I'm seeing. I haven't played with it, but it does have two super ED elements and one spherical element in it. So there should be some good distortion control on it. And if you're in the medium format series, it's just always good to get another lens for the, uh, the GFX cameras. So this one's really fun. And I, I, I really appreciate this one because I come from a shooting BMX and skateboarding for magazines, it was like the beginning of my career forever ago. And uh, apparently this guy's dog's a talented skateboarding cameraman. Uh, pretty much he's, there's a, look at these floppy ears. He strapped a camera to his dog and because his dog chases him wherever he goes, he, whenever he goes skating, the dog is always trying to like follow along with him. So he just said, fine, document me. And this dog is on point. Look at this. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I thought this was great. And it is the kind of content out there that can help to make you smile. And it's just not boring at all to watch. Yeah, scratch those ears. Rah, 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 rah. So check that link out if you just want to watch some fun footage of a dog chasing around its owner, but is really just documenting him skateboarding. And the guy's doing a pretty good job, yeah, honestly. So this is kind of heavier news. I actually got this from my father, who is the son of Holocaust survivors. This is actual drone footage from Auschwitz. This film crew, uh, let me enlarge this up for you guys. This actually got access to the grounds and brought in a drone. And you can actually see that they're taking some pretty great documentary of these grounds, and we always see drone footage being these beautiful landscapes. And while these uh, this clips that this crew got is pretty beautiful, it ha has a lot of weight to it being the grounds that it's documenting. Um, you can actually see just how a massive and incredible this looks. And we usually don't get to see this side of things when it comes to all the sample drone footage that's out there. So I figured this would be good to throw it in there. Um, I don't care what culture you come from, what your religion is, or where your thought process is on anything. Um, you got to see what people are documenting out there with the technology we have today, looking at what happened in our past. So uh, it's a really cool contrast, like I said, to all the beautiful footage we see out there. It is beautiful, but there's such weight to this, and um, I think it's worth checking out. All right, so that's pretty much what I'm going to give you guys for news this week. Uh, let's take a look at some stuff on our channel. Dan Norton just dropped this ultra high key on set, episode 195. Uh, we're shooting with some of our best models, Erica and Marissa, you guys love them. So he's talking about doing the white background and giving you how you would shoot a group and why he's using the light source using, which is a big light source this time. Definitely a different uh, style than he's usually doing. And I'll show you what it looks like without the, the, all the lights, all the lights put together, how he's controlling that light, how he's getting those models to pose the way he wants them to get, uh, to pose or get the expressions he wants to get out of them. Uh, it's a really fast watch, five minutes or so. Take a look at that. Um, it's episode 195, so that just gives you an idea of how many of these on sets he's doing. I'm sorry for the extra noise you might be hearing. I still record this in the store. Don't freak out and write me in the comments, okay? I know there's some audio files out there. Speaking of our channel, I tried to pull a comment from last week's Rewind so we can keep the discussion going. And you guys were amazing last week by answering the waffles, pancakes, French toast debate. And uh, if you want to know where I stand on that, always waffles pancakes if I'm gonna be weighed down and not have to worry about the rest of the day, and French toast if I'm sharing it. Uh, and it has to be that thick Texas toast. But I thought it was amazing to hear the responses based on where you guys are from. So if you're curious about that discussion, go take a look at last week's comments. Uh, I'm gonna keep this one easy though. RGB build site says, where did you buy this shirt? I like it. Uh, pretty much I try to get them off of NYC vendor tables. When I see them in the street and I see a bunch of t-shirts, I try to go over there, get a bunch of them, break deals with the guys. Um, you know, I'm sure they're, 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 the shirts are shady to some degree, uh, but that guy's freezing. I'm supporting somebody in New York and I'm getting a dope shirt. If it's not 
a white shirt out of a five pack, it's usually a shirt off of a table. Uh, however, I'm pretty sure any shirt you see me wear, you can find online. Speaking of things I bought, I got some pink handcuffs right here at Adorama. And the reason we have, I just think it's hilarious. So uh, check out that, I'll put the link for these down in the description below. But um, the reason that Adorama sells these is because they are resourced for law enforcement. So they end up getting a lot of different things. I mean, we sell body bags and bulletproof vests. I see kids walking out of Adorama bulletproof vests. So uh, check that out if you want. So I'm gonna leave you guys with one more question. Uh, I'm working on something really big for Adorama. More details coming soon, but I really wanna know in our audience, who out there are gamers? Let me know your favorite video game of all time. I don't care what era, I don't care what platform. It could be on Commodore 64 for all I care. But tell me what your favorite game of all time is. If you can't pick just one, Give me a few of them, but tell me what platforms you play them on and uh, we'll have a discussion about that. If you're curious about what my favorite game is, uh, I have a bunch, but I'm always known for this one. You can head over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash lastxwitness. Check out the last live stream I just did where I shoot with Westcott lighting modifiers and Eric's lens. And uh, look at the shirt I'm wearing. That'll clue you in if you know what you're looking at. Um, but I'll tell you guys next week my favorite. I'm really curious about that. Tell me your favorite games down below. All right. That's gonna do it for me. I will see you guys next week. Hit like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Talk to each other in the comments, yada, 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 yada. Peace.